Hi there and uh, welcome to our Media Management Skills course. I'm Meryn Myatt. And I'm Sarah Perris. We're going to try and build this up logically, aren't we, over five seminars. The first one's going to be largely Sarah and she's going to be talking about the real basics of good communications, am I right? Yep, absolutely. I'd better stop talking and leave you to it then. Okay, many thanks Meryn. Okay, so many times um, people say, how do, we, how do we get this absolutely right? I'm going to take you through a very simple process. And believe me, it's not rocket science, but it is very, very effective. I know because I've used it in ma on many occasions. A very simple process to ensure excellent media outcomes, whether it's with television, papers, wherever, you're actually going to be very successful if you follow this process. So where do we start? Well, we find with so many people, if they're going to a board meeting or they're going to a meeting with their boss, they think through the, all of their programs, where are they, what's happening, what could they be asked, they prepare. However, when they go, when they're asked to do a press interview, so often they just say, yes, fine, OK, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go and uh, I'll do this press interview, no problem at all. And they don't actually do the preparation. This preparation I'm going to take, this process I'm going to take you through will enable you to do that preparation thoroughly. So, step one. So many people do not think about what they want out of an interview. Why should you give your precious time to a journalist just to meet their demands? There isn't a reason for that. So, think about your objective. What do you want out of this? It could be simply building relationships with a new journalist on a publication. It could be that you're doing a launch of a new product or service and you want that message out there. It could be enhancing your reputation and brand generally. It could be a, a million and one other things. But think about your objective because I promise you the journalist will have one. They may, be want, they may want to be over here. It's very unlikely that you're going to want to be in the same place. So set your objective. Think about where you want to be. Step two. <laughs> The next step is once you've set your objective, you know where, which direction you're going in, what is it you want to say? These are your key messages. Now, I would probably split these into two sections. One section being general corporate, corporate key messages, which you should set and have to deliver to any audience whatsoever, to be honest. And these are not company slogans. It's not advertising. It's not marketing. It is key messages. Things that you want to see written here on the radio or see on the television about your company. So, for example, you're the leading provider of a particular service. You're the biggest this or the. Um, it could be really it, it could be anything, but it is not advertising slogans. So think very carefully about what it is your company stands for and what you want to see reported in the press. The other side of the key messages could be a specific project. So it could be a product you're about to launch, a new car or a new insurance product, or it could be something, you had a promotion, for example. So some specific key messages about yourself. So those are key messages that could change. The corporate key messages may, but if you really want to develop your brand, at least one or two of them should continue throughout the life of the company really. So consider those key messages, think them through. What are they? What do you want to see reported in the press? The next step really will prove out whether or not those key messages work. And what is this next step? It is what the journalists are after. It's the prove it. Can you prove that you are the leading, the best, the biggest, whatever it is you're saying in your key messages you have to be able to prove, to substantiate those key messages. So in this box we want to see lots of uh, facts, figures, research, if you've won any awards. Journalists love awards because that's somebody else saying how fantastic you are, not just you saying how fantastic you are. They love that. Um, case studies, case histories, Tell the story. That's what the journalists are after. They want you to do as much of their job for them as you possibly can. And two little words, very, very important to use time and time again with journalists, for example. 
very, very important that you can substantiate what it is you are saying about your company. Because if you can't, they won't use the story, I promise you. They won't use the interview. You're wasting your time. You're wasting their time. You must have these prove-its in there. Now, a lot of people say to us when we're actually media training them, what about those questions that I really don't want to answer or I can't answer? Well, actually, there are three different types of questions that you can't answer. The first is a question the journalist has thrown at you that actually you don't know the answer to because it's not your area of specialisation or responsibility. And that's fine. You just say, sorry, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'll find somebody who can give you an answer because that's not my area of specialisation. Or you need to speak to another company about that. Second question is a question that you should know the answer to that is your area of specialisation, but you've had one of those funny moments and you just can't remember it. Or it's a very detailed fact or figure that you just can't remember the answer to. That's fine too. They expect you to be human. They don't expect you to be an automaton or a computer and be able to spit everything out off the top of your head. But always ask them, OK, what's your deadline on this? When do you need the information? I'll get it for you. I'll email it to you or I will phone you with it straight away and, and make sure that you do get back to them. Now, the third one is the most difficult. It is that question that you do know the answer to, but actually you don't want them to have the answer. So, for example, it could be your financial results and you don't release your financial results and you don't want them to have that information, but of course you know what that information is. Now, there are a number of different ways you could respond to this question and it depends largely on your, um, your personality. The most important thing is to consider the attitude in which you respond. If you immediately say, oh, no, can't, I'm not going to answer that question. Well, guess what? That's when you start to get into serious trouble. So how do you answer it? It could be something as simple as, well, do you know what? Our competitors would love to have that information, but I'm not going to give it to them. Or it could be, if I gave you that information, I'd have my P45 waiting for me when I got back to the office. Or... If I told you that, I'd have to shoot you. Whatever it is, so long as you respond with a nice smile, with a, a, a helpful attitude, then that's fine. You will get, a, get away with it. The most important thing then is to use a little word. So, I'm sorry if I told you that, I'd have to shoot you. But, so the journalist is over here. That's where they want to go. You want to get over here. How do you do it? With that little word, but. So I can't give you that information because it, <laughs> I'm not going to let our competitors know that. But what I can tell you is that bridges you straight over to where you want to be. Then you come back down. What's your objective? Where do I want to be? What are my key messages? Let me prove it with lots of examples, case histories and so on. Bob's your uncle. You've got out of the difficult question. That's how to get out of the three questions that you may not be able to answer. Now. The final part of this equation, or this process, is the Q&As. Q&As, what are they? Questions and answers. So many pe times people say, well, yeah, these are the questions we want the journalists to ask. Waste of time. <laughs> That's not the questions that the journalists are necessarily going to ask. What you have to consider ahead of time is those questions that you will be asked that actually you may not want to answer. And if you don't have a, a pre prepared response for them, you could get that <coughs> rabbit in the headlight look. Oh my goodness, where did that one come from? How am I going to answer that one? That's when you start to get into difficulties with journalists. That's when the challenges start. That's when they start to prod and probe and things can get difficult. So in these Q and A's, consider all of the Pretty typical questions, you know, how many employees turn over, all those general statistics that you should have to your fingertips. But then those questions that you do not want them to ask, but you do need to respond to, those are absolutely critical. And sometimes, to be honest, it is difficult to do that yourself. So you may need to 
get somebody else in to look at it from an external perspective. We often go into clients and just hit them with a load of questions that they hadn't even considered before. So if you need to, bring somebody else in to ask those difficult questions or to, to give you that different perspective. So that's the questions. The answers do not need to be reams and reams long. They do not need to be uh, spat out verbatim when you're talking to journalists. They're just an indication of the air, of the direction that you're going in. Okay, so have those Q and A's prepared well in advance. So that in simple, if you if you take it all, is is a communications process. It can be used, frankly, in in, in any area of communications, but this one works specifically with uh, with journalists. And if you look at the uh, at this process and you draw a line here, basically from there down, that's the PR. That's the bit that you want to see, written in the papers, in the trade magazines, listen to on the radio, see and hear on the television. That's what you want. However, that top half, that's what the journalists want. Without that, they're not gonna go with the bottom bit. So. You need to have that whole process in place in order to enable you to have fantastic communications with, with the press. That's what they're after. So, put this process in place. I know, I've done it on numerous occasions, you will have excellent media results. Doesn't matter whether it's the trade press, national television, it works.